and welcome to Del Monte on Science. This is part six. We're discussing the relationship between time, existence, and energy. In our last video post, we talked about the existence equation and the concept that all reality, all mass, etc., requires energy to exist. And now the question is, where is that energy coming from? So let's discuss that. This is where we left off. And we said a mass is traveling in time. And traveling in time means it's ex that is, by definition, existence. And to do that, it's consuming. It requires energy in this magnitude. And the negative sign I interpret to mean it requires energy. OK, so it has a kinetic energy, and it's requiring energy to move in time. And that's the existence equation. But where is the energy coming from? All right. Now, I did a lot of research on this, and there are two candidates. The first one I looked at was the gravitational fields. of the universe. And so this was number one. And I said, could it be coming from all the gravitational fields, which actually have energy? Gravitational fields store energy. Could it be coming from that? And could that be explaining why distant galaxies are moving faster than the speed of light? And the answer is no. It's an unlikely candidate. And what makes it an unlikely candidate? Well, first, when we look at very distant galaxies, they appear to be moving faster than the speed of light. If indeed that's because we're pulling the energy out of the gravitational field between galaxies, we're violating uh, this special theory of relativity that says no uh, mass, including a galaxy, can actually travel faster than the speed of light. We also would have a problem with within a galaxy because there are gravitational fields within a galaxy, and if it was pulling it out of the gravitational fields within a galaxy, we'd be seeing the sun moving away from us, the other planets moving away from us. This turned out to be a dead end. This whole area, this, this thrust of research turned out to be a dead end. But another thrust of research turned out to be, I believe, the key. And that's what people commonly call dark energy. And I have explained this in great detail in my uh, previous posts uh, that relate to the uh, accelerated uh, expansion of the universe. But essentially, what's happening is that between two galaxies, and I'm going to use that to represent a galaxy, there's a vacuum. And let's, for the moment, just consider it a perfect vacuum. There are no other planets in it. There are no subatomic particles. There are no comets, etc. It's just a perfect vacuum. It still has energy. And we know that because we do experiments on Earth with uh, vacuums. And we know vacuums have energy and give rise to virtual particles. And there's a whole number, the laundry list of effects, that we can demonstrate a vacuum has energy. Well. The theory that I'm putting forward is that to exist, the galaxy is pulling the energy out of the vacuum. OK. Now, what happens? Well, energy is equivalent to mc squared, mass times the speed of light squared. So you essentially have less mass, OK? so. We can't see 
the energy. We can't put a probe in there. In physics, we don't have an energy probe. And we actually can't see the virtual particles. And I've talked about why that's the case in previous videos. But there's no doubt that there is energy inside the vacuum. And my postulate is that to exist, it's pulling the energy outside, out of the vacuum. Now, what happens? Now, let's use an analogy. Here's the Earth. The Earth is a certain size. This is the Earth. Because it has a certain mass, and the gravity pulls that together. And the size of the Earth is a function of the mass and the density and so on. And that's what, what uh, essentially constitutes our Earth. Well, you can think of the, the vacuum the same way. The vacuum, the size of the vacuum, is a function of how much energy, or equivalently mass, is inside of it. As galaxies pull out energy, and equivalently mass, what happens is the gravity that was holding the vacuum together, so to speak, as an analogy, actually becomes weaker because there's less mass in there, there's less energy. And so what's happening is the, the uh, space begins to expand. And I've talked about this in other videos, and that the furthest galaxies, the ones that have existed the longest, have pulled the most energy out of that space. And so they're, they're, they appear to be moving at the speed of light. But it's actually the space that, that is expanding at the speed of light. So that, and this is, uh, this is what I uh, uh, am proposing to explain dark energy. Dark energy has not really been explained, and I believe this is the first time on, on YouTube. My, my videos are the first uh, videos that actually explain dark energy, and my book, Unraveling the Universe's Mysteries, I believe is the first book that puts puts forward that theory. So with all this, let's talk about uh, the nature of time. Let's try to define it. And we're going to go relatively quickly because I think we've built quite a foundation. First, we can say time is, is a measure of change. Not always, but from a common sense viewpoint, that's true. We can also say Time is a measure of energy because change generally requires energy. Three, we can say time is a measure of existence. And we talked about the uh, atom frozen uh, at absolute zero and continuing to exist and continuing to move in time. I put down the existence equation to show you what it required to move in time. Uh, the energy to fuel time, based on the research that I've done, the energy to fuel time is actually being taken from the vacuums of space. And lastly, because we are uh, seeing enormous changes, you can also say that the entropy is increasing. Now, Entropy is a, a matter of energy that becomes lost and is no longer useful. And it's typically heat waste and so on. And it's also a measure of disorder. And we can say that there's a way of looking at this that says that the increase in energy is the price we pay for time. So. Let me leave you with just this one thought. The existence equation is new, and I believe it's a milestone. I believe it offers us a path uh, to solve mysteries that have baffled science uh, for uh, 100 years. Uh, the most perplexing mystery, of course, being dark energy, which uh, uh, came about in 1998, the discovery of the accelerating universe. And I also believe it gives us a clue to time travel. 
So I hope you enjoyed this series. It's been my pleasure to talk with you. And until next time. Thank you.